Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us once again via Facebook Live or Zoom. We're so glad you're with us as we now begin our Wednesday evening pre-service meditation here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. Thank you for joining us virtually. So let's take this time, these next 10 minutes, to turn our attention inward. wherever you are seated right now. Just allow yourself to close your eyes, take a nice deep breath in and out. Just noticing if there's any tension in the body, in the legs, in the torso, in the arms, in the neck. And if so, just relaxing, letting that go. And just sitting up. Turning our attention now to the breath. as we focus on each in-breath and each out-breath, we bring our attention fully into the now. Breathing is happening now. Life is recreating, reshaping itself now. And so just try to keep your attention on the breath. And if the mind wanders, which it has a tendency to do, just take a moment to notice. Notice what kind of thought pattern you're engaged in. Maybe you're noticing a sound, thinking about the past or the future, noticing a sensation in the body, Whatever it is, just observe for a moment with great compassion. If you see any or sense any judgment about that coming up, notice that and let it go. And then after you've noticed where your attention went, very gently and compassionately bring your awareness back to the breath. Breathing in. Breathing out. Breathing in. Breathing out.
And so gently bring your awareness back into the room, wherever you are right now. Maybe wiggle your toes, shake your shoulders. Just bring your awareness back into the body and open your eyes. So welcome to anyone who joined us after we began the meditation. We're so glad you're with us this evening for our Wednesday evening virtual service here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. So glad you're with us. Let's join together in our opening chant led by our wonderful Sam Krieger and our magnificent Margaret Owens. <laughs> Margaret. Ah, so yes, God is in this place wherever we all happen to be. Let's uh, turn our attention inward to know that truth together as we turn inward for our invocation. And so right here, right now in this moment, I absolutely recognize that God indeed is in this place because God is everywhere present throughout creation. I absolutely know that God is the one life, the one pure love intelligence out of which everything comes into being and that its nature permeates everything in creation. That it is the very life expressing itself as my life, as the life of each and every person gathered virtually for the service this evening gathered here in the sanctuary. It is the life of every being everywhere. And I absolutely know that that essence of God's nature is unfolding and revealing itself throughout our time together this evening, that this is a divine activity unfolding in the mind of God. I know that we feel the vibration of spirit as love in feeling our connection, whether we're here in this sanctuary or just connected virtually, we can still feel that connection we share in the life of God. We feel the presence of God's love in the service of each and every person that's part of the service this evening. I know that we are uplifted and inspired by the divine unfolding through our music this evening, through Sam and through Margaret. I open myself right here, right now, to just being a vessel through which Spirit speaks the word that we've all come to hear, a word that reminds us of the truth 
of our oneness with God so we can express and experience that truth more fully in our lives. And so I'm giving thanks right here, right in this moment, for all the blessings that I know we receive in our time together. And in gratitude, I release this word knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. Together we say, Amen. And so please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I heard them screaming on the front porch this morning, shouting in that old familiar way. How she ever took him back since the last time is beyond me and there's nothing that I can do or say. Who knows what goes on behind closed doors? Lord knows what the children see and hear. The hand that I've offered's been shunned, I understand. And my only course of action's becoming very clear I just gotta shine my light right there, right now And trust that God is there somehow Whether I can see your works or feel your grace I know your face is there The daily news, it seems to drag me under With the heartache and fear that it feeds And all the gossip round the authors think they'd poison the water Seems contempt is becoming a need And now it's easier to see where they need correcting then search my soul and see just what I'm projecting I just gotta shine my light right there, right now And trust that God is there somehow Whether I can see your works or feel your grace I know your face is there Beautiful. Thank you so much, Margaret. Yes. <laughs> oh, well, good evening again. Um, last week, I spoke about the value of spontaneity 
in opening us up to ways to experience and express God's nature that's always present within and around us. So I hope uh, some of you played with and had fun with the exercise that I asked us all to try throughout the week of finding ways each day to be spontaneously loving and kind with ourselves and with others. And I know I definitely had fun, uh, thought of little things, that, oh, that would be, what a nice way that, to express love that I hadn't thought about for someone. I also had uh, an experience that I'll share later that I think pertains to tonight's topic, which is projection. A problem that Margaret has absolutely zero trouble with. <laughs> uh, so if you haven't guessed, I wanted to look at how each moment of our lives, we're projecting our perceptions, our beliefs, the way we see things, which basically is the culmination of the beliefs that we have built up based on our life experience up until this moment. So we're basically projecting our past in some way onto the present moment, onto our life experiences. And in Science of Mind, we emphasize that there's a direct correlation between how we perceive things, our predominant beliefs and thought patterns, and how we experience life. You know, what we perceive about ourselves, about others, about the world at large, shapes our life experiences. I don't think that's rocket science. I mean, I think people can grasp this idea that if we have a real negative view of ourselves, if we have a negative view about life, about others in the world, we experience a lot of negative. And one of the analogies that we often use is that of a projector that's projecting a movie onto a screen. If we were to think of the projector and the light in the projector as God's nature, as that impulse of God to experience goodness, its nature through us in unique ways. And the film represents our consciousness, our thoughts, our beliefs that make up how we perceive things. And the movie on the screen, it would represent our life experiences, how we're experiencing life based on our thought patterns, based on our perceptions, based on that film that we're putting in front of the light. So the more our thought patterns, our beliefs, reflect an innate sense of the goodness of God in us, in others, in life in general, that there's always some way to make good of anything, to bring goodness, to bring love, to bring joy, to bring peace, to bring uh, equanimity, any aspect of God's nature, that we can bring that to any situation in life, well, the more we're going to experience those qualities of God in our lives. The more we feel separate from God, from goodness, the more we perceive life and others or ourselves as not good, well, guess what? The more our life experiences become a lot of not good. So when we don't like what's playing, if we don't like the movie that we're watching, if we don't like what's unfolding in our lives, I think the tendency is often for us to try and change things out here, right? To change situations in the world. Be like going up to the movie screen and trying to change the movie at the movie screen. I don't know what you do, cut out a portion of the screen, maybe put a pillow or something in front of it. But really what we need to do, what needs to change, if we really want the change to stick, is our perception. We need to change the film between the light and the projector and the screen. And, you know, a lot of times we just don't, we don't realize to what degree we're projecting our perceptions based on our past and the way, you know, the ideas we built up 
up until this point. I remember a friend of mine in college years back really pointing this out with an experience that he had. He had traveled a lot, but he had wanted to go to India and go to an ashram for years, and he finally made that trip. And he said the first day as he was making his way, he took local buses to the ashram, and he had to at one point stop in a village for a couple of hours before he could take his next bus. And he got out in this remote village, and he didn't, I mean, he only spoke English, and he was the only Westerner who stepped off the bus. And he said there was an old or an elderly man that walked up to him. He seemed to be someone fairly important because people who were around were watching this man who walked up to my friend Paul and he said he had this scowl on his face as he was approaching him and he just looked at him. He stood just a few feet away with this scowl on his face looking at him and Paul's going, what have I done? Am I wearing something inappropriate? Have I offended this person? He's looking around and no one is really responding other than watching this man. And so he looked at the man and he said, do you speak English? And the man just kind of waved like he didn't understand and seemed to be even more upset. So he was scowling even more and was looking at him intently for a few more seconds, and Paul's going like, what have I done? And all of a sudden, the man got this look of approval on his face, and he smiled, and he laughed, and he put out his hand, and he shook Paul's hand really hard, and then he brought him over to his home. He said he and his wife made sure he had a nice hot meal before they accompanied back so he could get on his bus and go to the ashram. And as he said, I have no idea what that interaction was up front. He said, all I know is I was thinking I have done something bad, this man's offended, and obviously, from what I can tell, he was just checking me out. You know, be kind of like our version of, hi, how are you? Um, but that wasn't his frame of reference for that kind of behavior, and so he projected what he would think that look meant that behavior meant. And what was really fun about this experience is it kind of shows the different layers of perception that we uh, project onto a situation in our life. So when the group of us that were listening to this story, when Paul had finished, there was someone else in the group that looked at him. Now, this person had never traveled before who just said, oh my God, I can't believe you stayed there. I mean, it's like you stood there while this guy was doing this. If I was in a foreign place, I didn't speak English, someone started to approach me like that, I'd be out of there. I don't care. I would, I'd, you know, run. And so obviously you see a projection from someone else. At least Paul said, this is odd, I've offended them, but I didn't, didn't, he didn't necessarily feel like he was unsafe. This other person talked about how they would immediately project the idea of fear and being unsafe. We all look dumbfounded at the person who shared this because I don't know what image you have in your head, but let me tell you that this person that was saying that was a six foot two, like macho, burly, ex-football player who's telling us how terrified they would be if something like this happened and would run. And in our heads, it's like, when you're six foot two, you have a beard and you're burly like that, you don't, you don't get scared by something like that. Again, we were projecting our ideas of you know, how a person like that would or would not behave. So just to be aware, you know, aware of our perceptions, aware of the fact that whether we're aware of it or not, we're always, always projecting from our past, all of our life experience, all the thoughts and beliefs that we've built up to this moment onto the now moment. And this isn't necessarily a bad thing, okay? The good news about this 
is most of the time we're projecting something very positive. You know, the fact that we just get up and go about our routines, routines every day, and do whatever, even if you know, some of our thoughts are negative and we're having some negative feelings, just the fact that we get up and go about life represents a lot of projection of a belief that I can get up, I can go do this, I can you know, make it to work, I can keep on uh, you know, doing what I want to do. But it really helps for us to be mindful of the beliefs or the perceptions that create negative experiences in, in our lives. You know, those scenarios in the movie that we go, hmm, not really liking that. Because if we're aware of them, if we're paying attention to the fact that we're projecting something to create this negative experience, then we can do our work in consciousness to replace those beliefs, those perceptions, with those that have a greater, uh, represent a greater awareness of God always being present, God's nature being there in us and around us to make good of whatever is going on. And you'll hear us say this over and over again, but the best tool to help us to be mindful, to be aware of what's going on, so that we're not just letting our thoughts and beliefs just drive our experiences, is meditation. It's a, a spiritual tool that I think we resist because it seems like we're not really doing anything when we're just sitting and observing and watching our thoughts. I think there are a lot of ideas about that we're always supposed to experience bliss when we go into meditation. If we don't, then we think we're doing something wrong. And I go back to the value of just sitting. And you know they've shown that even if you just start with five minutes a day, sitting, as we did before the service, watching the breath, or maybe having a mantra, or focusing uh, on a quote or something, keeping the mind anchored on something, and then noticing, noticing when it goes off in a direction, watching the thoughts that come up, watching the feelings that come up, and just being with that for a moment, being in observer mode, cultivating an attitude of fascination about it, allows us to become aware of what's going on in our inner world. And then from there, from there, when we see that there are, there are patterns of fear, there are patterns of you know, feeling unworthy, lacking, whatever, then we can start to address those. You know, it, it helps us to notice when we're out of alignment with love, with joy, with wholeness, with abundance, when we're just not feeling good. When we do that in our meditation chair, wherever we do that, we'll find ourselves catching ourselves more frequently, being more aware of when we're out of alignment as we go about our day-to-day -day lives. And when we find that we're out, of alignment, we can ask ourselves, what am I projecting on this moment? Because remember, what we say, God and God's nature, there's some good to be brought forth in every moment, even in the negative situations in our lives. There's some good, there's some greater good of God that's there to be revealed and called forth. So we can ask, what, what negative thought, what what ideas from my past, because my belief system up until now is based on my past, am I projecting onto this moment? Am I remembering that God's nature lies within me and others to be called forth? So going back to the uh, exercise that I invited us all to practice during the week of finding ways to uh, practice spontaneous acts of kindness toward ourselves and others. Uh, I think it was last, I can't remember if it was last Thursday or Friday, but I, I woke up just really, really tired. I had not slept very well during the night. And as I was waking up and realizing that I was tired and I looked at the time, 
I decided to do something I haven't done in quite a while. I said, spontaneous act of kindness for myself. I'm just going to let myself stay in bed a little bit longer. I can do this. And so that felt really good. And so I stayed in bed for a while, but uh, I realized I wasn't falling back asleep. So as I was getting up, I started thinking about, OK, well, that was a spontaneous act of kindness for me. And then I thought, OK, what am I going to do as a spontaneous act of kindness for someone else? And I kid you not, this is true confessions time of a religious science minister, but this thought and this whole feeling of heaviness came out like, oh, I have to do something kind for someone else. I'm so tired. I mean, I'm, I'm kidding. You. It was this feeling of like, ugh, oh, and heavy. Now, there, as I noticed that, I realized the thought patterns was, pattern was, I'm tired. That'll be too hard. I just don't feel like it. Has anyone noticed that tendency to tell ourselves that things are going to be hard or that they have to be hard for them to be meaningful? And if we go back to last week, I made it really clear that these don't have to be big things. They can be just little spontaneous acts. So why was I imposing this idea of it was going to be hard? Now, here's the really great thing about our teaching and when we get into the practices of meditation, doing our affirmations and treatments and all the spiritual work that we do, is that we catch ourselves a lot faster. I, I had a tendency when I got into this, oh, things are going to be hard, I would drag that idea along with me throughout the day. And this lasted, I don't know, less than a minute before I caught myself. I just found myself laughing at myself, realizing, oh, you're projecting that old idea of things have to be hard. Things are going to be hard. So I just took a moment, paused, and thought, what is some easy, spontaneous act of love for others? And a couple of people came into my mind that I hadn't thought of in a while. One is a friend who was deceased years ago. And I just thought, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray for these people. I'm just going to do a quick prayer. I, I love, I think it's important to pray for those who have passed on to continue to feel our connection with them. And, and so I did a little prayer. And from that, from that changing the film, changing what I was projecting onto the moment, that opened me up to any number of ways that I continued to find little ways to indulge in little kindnesses for myself and share them with others. It switched from, you know, struggle to kind of lighthearted, sweet love. I would say I was lower on energy that day than some other days, but I got to remind myself that God was there the whole time because there were still ways that I could share love and accept love. And so what I invite for us to do this week is to just pause periodically as we go about our day and just check in with ourselves. How am I feeling in this moment? You know, if things are going well, great. I'm projecting, you know, lots of positive uh, reaffirming thoughts. But if we're feeling out of alignment, when we check in and realize something's not feeling right here, just ask ourselves, what negative thought am I projecting onto this moment? What negative thought am I projecting onto this moment? And then as we identify some kind of thought that we're engaged in that's creating the negative feelings, remind ourselves God is here in me, around me, at all times to make good of anything. And if you follow that up by thinking of someone you love, thinking of something you love, see if there's something around you that you can look at and appreciate it for its beauty. Right then and there, you are activating the nature of God that's in you. You're reminding yourself, God is here right now. And that, work with that, just with little things as you go about your day, periodically. Pause, 
check in. If you're not feeling in alignment, ask yourself, well, what negative thought am I projecting? And then turn your awareness to love, people you love, things you love. See something around you that fills you with a sense of beauty. As you do that, you remind yourself of the presence of the divine that's right there. You start shifting that film in the image that comes on the screen, the experience of your life, I'm sure you will find, starts to move in a positive direction. So let's take a moment to work through that process. I invite you to turn your attention inward and bring your awareness to anything that's going on in your life that brings up any sense of uneasiness or disturbance or unhappiness. And ask yourself, what thought am I projecting onto this moment? What thought am I projecting onto this moment that's making me feel unhappy or unsettled or uneasy? And now take a deep breath. And as you release that, just allow yourself to be moved into this awareness that God is right here at the center of your being, at the center of the situation. There's good to be made and revealed out of this. And so turn your awareness to a being that you love, human or otherwise. Realize that that's God's love that you're feeling. Think of something that you consider beautiful. That's God's beauty that you're feeling. God is right there, right there at the center of your being. And know that as you keep projecting this awareness of God's presence, you're opening up to bringing forth that goodness and thereby, trans thereby transforming the situation. And so I invite you to set your intention to release any ideas and beliefs from the past that inhibit your experience and expression of goodness in the now moment. Just be willing to release those patterns. And follow that up by setting your intention to embrace a greater sense of God's ever presence at the center of your being that's there to be projected into all areas of your life. And so from this place of feeling that presence of God that is always there, Please join me in knowing the truth about so many of the challenges that people face in their day-to-day -day lives. As we bring our awareness to that knowingness of that power and that presence that is love, that is wholeness, that is beauty, that is intelligence, that is goodness in every way it can be named, felt, realized, and to know that that is the presence of God, the one life, the one power that animates all creation, including me, including every being gathered for this service, every being everywhere. We are all expressions of God. And God's nature lies at the center of each and every one of us, always. And so knowing this, I invite us to join together in knowing that where there is any sense of separation from God, where there's any sense of disturbance around change that is happening in the world, that on the human plane, things are changing all the time, but the nature of God is constant. It never changes. It is always there at the center of everything and everyone. 
And so as we know this truth, we can know this truth for anyone that is feeling a sense of loss, a loss of something that's in their lives, maybe a change in career, it could be a loss of a friendship, it might even be the loss of a loved one that has transitioned into the next life. We know that the love that was felt, any aspects of God's nature that were experienced in that experience that is no longer there in the form that it was before can be felt and recognized and realized in some new way. God and God's nature never changes, and in that nature we all remain interconnected throughout all time and all space. I absolutely know that for anyone facing a health challenge, that the nature of the divine is perfect wholeness, and that nature of the divine is a healing energy that can transform anything that feels like dis-ease or discord into well-being. And so let us know together that that power and presence is present in every situation that feels like dis-ease or discord, that that power and healing presence is absolutely the, the healing power that shows us the way into the healing of this pandemic and other illnesses on the planet and it allows a greater expression of health and wholeness. Let us know together that this nature of God is eternally creative, that each of us is gifted with the creative nature of God to give of God's nature into the world in our own unique ways. And so for those who are not finding their way into expressing their unique talents, we know that God is there showing the way into the places where the ways they give to life are needed and valued and appreciated. We absolutely know that this nature of God is infinite, and so where there's any experience of lack that is just a human idea that is being opposed, projected onto the divide, but as we clear the way, we recognize that all beings are one with an infinite source that is there to give of itself and to take in of itself. And as we absolutely accept that for ourselves and others, we see a, an expansion in our ability to give and receive love, to give and receive in our creativity and appreciate the creativity of others. If it's in the area of finances, to absolutely open to that perfect inflow and being able to generously give back to the universe. We are one with an infinite giver-receiver. And that infinite giver-receiver at its core is love. So where there's any sense of lack of love, let us know right here, right now, that God's love is unconditional. It lies at the center of our being. And as we know this, we feel that vibration of love come up and heal anything that feels like unlovingness toward ourselves and others, and we see greater love being expressed in all relationships. And so from this place of love, feeling the impulse of love for ever greater good, let us now set our intentions for greater good in silence. And so whatever these intentions may be, greater good for ourselves, for others, for loved ones, for situations in the world, let us absolutely know that we're feeling the impulse of God for a greater revelation of itself in all these situations. God is right there, and as we know this, good is revealed. And together we declare, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And so we bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, knowing all paths lead us to the same God, the same truth. And so it's with a heart just filled with gratitude for knowing this truth, that I release this word knowing it is done in the mind of God, and so it is. Together we say, Amen. <laughs>
Yes, I'm only here for God. Yes, I'm only here for God. Yes, I'm only here for God. Amen. So this is the time in our service for our affirmative giving. And so for those who would like to make donations online, uh, I don't know if the link is showing up right now, but if not, it's nhcrs.org forward slash give, and that will take you straight to our donate, uh, donation page where you can make your donation. Uh, thank you so much for your contributions. Of course, you can always mail in your checks, which I know some of you continue to do, which we so appreciate. And also, we will be here for 30 minutes after service. So we'll be here till about 8.15, 8.20 uh, to answer the phone if you'd like to call into the church, 818-762-7566. And we can take your donation uh, via credit card or debit card over the phone. Again, so appreciate your continuing to support us so that we continue to be there for you and being able to gather like this. With that, let's hold our gifts to our hearts as we say together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you. Blessed always, blessed always For the arms of God surround us Let our joy be so triumphant That we rest in God and say As we bring our service to a close, just want to remind you that if you want to submit any prayer requests, that you can do so uh, via our email, church email, prayer at nhcrs.org. And you can also call into the church. Again, the number is 818-762-7566. And uh, option number four brings you to the ministry of prayer where you can leave a prayer request and uh, if you hit option three, which is dial a prayer, you can also hear a pre-recorded prayer. Reminder that we have prayer with a practitioner available after service for anyone who would like someone to pray with them live. Uh, just connect with us on Zoom if you're on Facebook Live right now. Uh, go to our website and then join us on Zoom and we can uh, connect you for one-on-one -on -one private prayer in a breakout room with a practitioner. Um, and another just final reminder, we will be here for 30 minutes after the service if any of you want to call in to make your donations over the phone. I uh, want to make sure that we thank everyone who's been of service. They're just here and you're out there in virtual land. Um, 
Tonight we've got uh, both Dean Regan and Bob Lyon who are holding vigil for us. Uh, thank you, thank you, Melissa Allen, who's out there uh, supporting us on Facebook Live, to Lynn Romanowski and Brenda Jordan, who are supporting us this evening via Zoom. Here in the sanctuary to Alex, uh, pardon me, before we go to Alex, how about Adam at the back once again for making sure that we had seen and heard here to Alex and Blair who are here on our technical team, Doreen who's here with the second camera, thank you, thank you, and our awesome, awesome musical support from Margaret and Sam, thank you once again as always. Uh, let's see, a couple of announcements. So we'll be back next Wednesday, uh, same time, same, same link. Uh, and so my topic will be the power of silence. I might just kind of stand here for an hour. Let's see how that works. <laughs> um, OK, get serious. Uh, that was spontaneous, by the way. We invite you to stay informed and up to date with us through our website. And if you've not signed up for our weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters, uh, we encourage you to do that on our website so you'll be proactively notified of things that are coming up, such as our 2020 Abundance Workshop with Dr. Mark that begins this coming Monday. Uh, no, sorry, two, not this coming, the following Monday, August 3rd. And uh, that's a five-week workshop. It'll be through August 31st. And we invite you to register today on our website. It'll be based on the book, The Art of Abundance, 10 Rules for a Prosperous Life by Dennis Merritt Jones. And the cost is responsible giving. And I always tell people, if you're trying to grow your abundance consciousness, do it with Dr. Mark. It, I know the times I attended the workshops, my life, transformed, so um, great, great minister to be working with on, um, on abundance. Grace Notes for God, a musical feast. I love that. <laughs> um, concert and fundraiser. So this is, we don't have gourmets for God for obvious reasons these days, but that's okay. We can still get together and have fun and raise money for the church. And we've got wonderful, wonderful soloists, such as Margaret Owens, who will be part of that evening. Um, it's going to be really a chance to enjoy a wonderful, entertaining concert and support your beloved church at the same time. So uh, tickets are available online, nhcrs.org, or you can call in to the church um, during office hours to uh, purchase them that way. Uh, this coming Sunday, our practitioner, Carol Winokur, will be leading our grief, grief support group. And so anyone that's going through any kind of grief experience, uh, Carol is a master at leading that. And we just want to remind you that our Zoom virtual patio experience to connect before and after our services on Zoom is available. We're always there afterwards for a reception line. We have teen church going for the teens on Zoom. We've got the men's group meeting every Sunday at 11 on Zoom. We have a Zoom meditation Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m. All of that is on our website, so please visit nhcrs.org for that information. Again, just want to say thank you so much for being with us this evening. Let's join in prayer one more time. And so how grateful I am for all the blessings that we've received in our time together this evening. I absolutely know that the divine has revealed itself to different elements of the service and that as we've come to look at this idea of projection, we leave with a greater awareness of what we might be projecting into our lives and those things that we can change to have a greater experience of God's nature in our lives. I know we bring this awareness forward as we go about our day-to-day -day lives and it ripples out into the world. And so I give thanks for all the blessings 
we've received and how they multiply as we go forward. And in gratitude, I release this word knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. Together we say, Amen. Let's join in song one more time. Amen.